Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's One Key Idea session on Advanced Security Tester. I am Rex Black, president of RBCS, a worldwide testing and quality assurance firm serving clients ranging from small startups to Fortune 20 global enterprises. Since 1994, RBCS has delivered insight and confidence to hundreds of clients around the world. We have a team of international consultants that deliver customized training, consulting, and expert services to companies that are looking to improve their test and quality assurance practices. Now today, I am happy to welcome our guest presenter, Mark Tanian. Mark is a professional development provider for RBCS, an adjunct faculty member of St. John's University in New York City, and executive director of education for the New York Metro ISC2 chapter. Uh, Mark is actively engaged in security research and is currently exploring sound and effective uses of blockchain-based distributed applications. Mark sees businesses and societies undergoing great pressures as they strive to adapt to and adopt pervasive presence, computing, and communications. For Mark, each professional is a security professional. We all need to become aware of today's security challenges and take ownership of our part in addressing those risks. Um, so I'll turn it over to Mark in just a second here. Just to note, uh, if you have any questions uh, during the course of the webinar, uh, submit them uh, throughout your presentation via your webinar interface, but please note that they are answered only at the end. So Mark, over to you. Well, thank you, Rex, and everyone who joined us today. As Rex said, I'm going to talk briefly about the Advanced Security Tester Training Course. In general, this is a practical training course for test professionals who need to test the security of systems, applications, and components. Participants learn about risk management, security principles, security auditing, security test process, security test objectives, and much more. Now, it comes in two forms. Uh, an in-person training course is a three-day course, which consists of lecture, knowledge application, and hands-on exercises. There are, there's also another option for a virtual or online course, which is actually quite popular. Uh, these run a little shorter over the three days, and it's a little bit more condensed and, and potentially more convenient for folks who are uh, unable to get away from, uh, from the office as, as long as, as a in-person course would require. The outcomes that we uh, achieve with this course is, and this is just a small set, a subset of, of those outcomes, uh, we, where we plan, perform, and evaluate security tests from a variety of perspectives, policy-based, risk-based, standards-based, requirements-based, and vulnerability-based, as well as we align security test activities with project lifecycle activities and analyze the effective use of risk assessment techniques in a given situation to identify current and future security threats and assess their severity levels. Now, one of the less learning objective outcomes is the practical outcome of that this, this course is designed to help you take and pass a 120 minute, 45 question multiple choice exam, uh, which is the ISTQB AST certification exam. This course closely aligns with the ISTQ uh, Advanced Security Tester Syllabus. And as you may know, each ISTQB certification exam is designed and evaluated to be consistent with their respective syllabus. And you might be wondering, is this course for you? Ideally for this course is for this course is ideal for test professionals seeking to transition into security testing. The course is designed to be accessible to all who want practical knowledge of security testing. The main audiences that were considered when this was designed, this course was designed, was, was to address people with no security testing experience. Uh, and who, but who have had some experience with testing in general, who are certified with the ISTQB foundational level, uh, at the foundation level, and uh, they have three years of testing experience. You'll actually need both of those as a, those are both requirements to sit for the exam. 
but also for those who may not be directly uh, interested in ISTQ certification, we also, it's also great for folks, people who want to show an aptitude for security and security testing. Now, some questions that you might have, uh, and of course, we're going to happy to entertain uh, your, your additional questions, of course. Uh, one, one question is, how does the material covered relate to NIST security compliance? The risk assessment framework that we study through the course closely aligns with NIST SP 800-30, which is called Guide for Conducting Risk Assessments. And the terms that are, the security terms that are used are consistent with this uh, use of those terms. And of course, all the testing terms, the more traditional testing terms will, are consistent with ISDQ uh, B, uh, terminology. So this is very much consistent with, with consensus-based thinking in, in the security space and testing space as well. Does this course cover application code, application or code security, uh, ser server security, network or infrastructure security, or all of the above? And the answer is yes. This is a holistic course where we cover a wide range of security testing. The testing topics address risk assessment, security controls, IT and network security, system security, dynamic and static software security assessment. And one last question before we hand it off to you uh, is how about as a comparison uh, to Security Plus, how, how well aligned does this course align with, with Security Plus certification? And the answer to that is uh, it actually aligns fairly well. It aligns about 75% uh, to between the Security Plus body of knowledge and the ISTQB advanced security tester syllabus. So by taking and preparing for the ISTQB exam, we actually uh, facilitate your ability to sit for yet another useful exam, which is the Security Plus exam. And in addition, we provide an, an outline with our course that shows the overlap in coverage and points out a good resource to use to study for the additional material in the Security Plus exam. Um, yeah, and that's, that's all what I have for FAQ. I'm happy to uh, help you understand this, uh, this course and, and uh, how, it, how it fits with your objectives. Great, so uh, thank you, Mark. Um, <clears throat> maybe you could advance to the next. Sure. Absolutely. I think we have a, a closing slide there. Absolutely. I'd like to have that put up while we uh, take the questions. And uh, while we're waiting for uh, uh, questions, again, thank you for, uh, for presenting this. Um, I know you had mentioned, we were discussing an assessment for a, a client, um, and I know you had mentioned um, uh, the NIST framework as being a really good um, framework to use for, uh, for those kinds of assessments. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, the, so NIST guidance, uh, I, if, if, if we look at their website, it's an enormous collection of, of, of information, just fantastic work that they do. Uh, the U.S. tax uh, payer is, is, is well served by NIST. Uh, <laughs> they, do, they really do excellent work. They learn a lot. Yeah. Uh, um, and by, by reading their stuff. And, and what uh, I haven't mentioned and what you're referring to, Rex, is the NIST cybersecurity framework. And uh, that framework is, is oriented towards looking at secu the security program of an organization uh, and, and what are the qualities of an effective security program. The, the, the scope of, of that framework is so much broader than security testing. It's similar to the relationship between information assurance and security testing in the sense that, that security testing is, 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 is a vital part of, of effective security, but, it, but it's, it's a tiny part um, where, where, the, where the framework is looking holistically at the entire 
operations of security, looking at from identifying uh, what your assets are, what what your relate trust relationships are, what your risks are, uh, to prevention. Uh, how how do we pr prevent or mitigate these risks? To uh, detection. Well, okay. So now we've got an issue. Are are we aware of it? To response to recovery. Uh, ultimately, recovery tends to be the end. And we do speak to this uh, generally uh, as a free, as a general objective of security in in the IST in this advanced security testing course. Yeah. But, it, but there's so much more to the framework uh, that, that, that really speaks to the, to the operational aspects that are beyond testing. Um, it's a great resource to, for folks to look at as well. So the, the course would be a good way of somebody kind of uh, gaining the, the background that they would need to then say download that NIST material and, and read it and understand it and start to think about how to apply it. Yeah, I think so. I think this is a great this is, this is a great segue from, especially if you're coming from an oper have a more strict operational perspective or 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 software development and testing perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, this course really opens the floodgates into the, the the very large dynamic realm of security, and and certainly gets you gives you the vocabulary and the and and the foundation you would need to really get a hold of that frame, the this cybersecurity framework and, and understand it, I agree. The other thing I think that was, is really valuable, if, if somebody's like a, a functional tester or, or even they've done some, some amount of non-functional testing, maybe usability testing or performance reliability testing, that sort of thing, if they haven't done security, one of the things I've noticed with a lot of clients when I do assessments is that there's a real gap between the test team and the the information security people they gener they're generally in two completely different groups it's like an infosec group and then there's the test group and i've talked to some people who are you know the managers of these infosec groups and asked them you know well what do you what do you think the testers are covering that that is relevant to you and they're like well you know probably not much and then one of them said I'm pretty confident that the testers test role-based security with respect to making sure that someone can do what they should be allowed to do, but I'm also pretty confident that they do not test role-based security with respect to people being disallowed from doing what they shouldn't be able to do. So I think taking this course will raise people's awareness, even the, just a, if they intend to remain as a functional tester, to make sure that they're doing their functional testing in a way that really complements and fills in any gaps with the uh with what the infosec guys are doing yeah i the this notion of of negative and positive security testing is is really really a, a great insight that you get from this course yeah is is that it's one thing to test uh does the security so from a from a security pers person's point of view it's very negative do i keep the bad guys out and and, and less about do, the, do I keep the? Do I allow the good guys to do what they need to do? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe more traditional functional testing would say, well, let's let's really focus on enabling the folks to use the stuff, the, use the system or or, or software, uh, and not right. worry as much about the, the 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 negative side of things. Well, well, that of course is the typical functional testing outlook, right? Is is primarily about. Uh, you know, verifying and validating that the that the user can do what they need to do. Now, there's there's generally some amount of checking of the guardrails, right? So if the user, you know, puts in some sort of erroneous input or something like that, that you know that that gets bounced out. Um, but that's that's negative testing in a somewhat different sense, right? That's that's a matter of really it's about protecting the user from him or herself, you know, and the user is assumed to be a, um, you know, a, a uh, non malicious, yeah, not malicious, right? <laughs> they have, they have, they have every reason to use the system and the system should help them do what they're trying to accomplish. Right. Which of course, from the security testing point of view is it's, it's backwards, right? I mean, cause you, you have to make the assumption that the user that you're contemplating here is your enemy is a malicious user as a, 
anti-stakeholder, if you will, and you need to test the system's ability to deny that person, um, you know, any any um, access to vulnerabilities. So it is a different mindset, and I think it's really helpful for for all testers to to be aware of that difference. Yeah, and and to keep the balance. Yeah, uh, you know the 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 principles of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. They the, the, these are the three primary qualities of security, yeah. and and. Uh, the, 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 there's a balance between those three. It's sort of, in some ways, they're almost like an iron triangle at times. Yeah. <laughs> where 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 um, you um, pull pull away from availability as you achieve confidentiality, but depending on on who you're making something unavailable to, you're actually disturbing the business. That you know that CEO really did need to see that file, <laughs> and. <laughs> And, yeah. and, and, and so, uh, so, so there's that balance that I think if, if, if traditional security and, and traditional functional testing would, would, would meet in the middle, uh, I think you, you'd find that, that, that balance across those two needs. Yeah. I think this course is a really good uh, way to get people to start thinking about that. I know back a, a number of years ago, before, before the ISTQB syllabus came out, I, I took a, um, a course that uh, covered the Security Plus body of knowledge, um, and it was it was just like a light bulb being turned on in my head. It wasn't that I wasn't aware of security and privacy and concerns before, but my awareness was so thin and um, you know full of sort of uh, gaps, right? And going through that. Security Plus certification and and that that whole body of knowledge really made me aware of a lot of things that just from from doing testing functionality, testing performance, testing usability, and so forth were all things that I needed to to keep in mind. Yeah. Great. Well, Mark, you and I guess maybe maybe I've helped a little bit with some of these questions, but the, between the two of us, we seem to have done such a great job of addressing the audience's curiosity that there are no open questions. <laughs> That's great. So I, I'm going to uh, <laughs> pat us pat us both on the back and assume that we uh, that we've held people enthralled because the uh, audience attendee count remained constant during our, our ramble here over the last few minutes. So we must have been saying something interesting. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wind it down. I'll let you, Mark, do you want to say anything in closing, um, before I do that? As, as, as Rex introduced me, it's very, uh, that, that point about you being a professional and every professional is really a security professional. Take that to heart. Mm -hmm. That everything that we do, all the decisions we make, are affecting the the security of our of, of ourselves personally and our privacy as well as as our employers. So I, I applaud you and and thank you for joining us and and, and seriously considering this course and security uh, in general. And and we look forward to uh, uh, your your participation in this field. Great, thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Uh, all the attendees, I hope you enjoyed this uh, free webinar uh, from RBCS. We, we do these free webinars as a service, as you know, to the software testing community because at RBCS, we are a not just for profit company. If you enjoy our free webinars and feel that they demonstrate solid insights into the kinds of testing challenges you face, please do make us your preferred software testing vendor for any and all expert services, uh, consulting, or training. And we're happy to provide a quote. Just send us an email info at rbcs us.com. And um, you have the other coordinates shown here on the slide uh, for how to connect with, uh, with me via LinkedIn or Twitter. And um, of course, this uh, webinar is being recorded like all webinars will be posted on our YouTube channel and also posted as a podcast. And I'll be announcing the, the podcast coordinates for those of you who don't have it um, when, we, when we post that over the next uh, day or so. So I'd like to thank everybody for uh, coming and I uh, hope you guys have uh, picked up some interesting tidbits from Mark uh, about security and the security testing course and uh, look forward to seeing you on subsequent uh, webinars.